Hi, and welcome back to Purple Color Life. We are back in the Takeuchi Mini X today because I've got a lot of cleanup work to do after the trench project and getting power to the pole building. Now, a lot of you have asked, what was the total cost of this project? We're gonna talk about that today. We'll talk about what parts and pieces we already had, what we had to buy, and what it costs us to get 50 amps of power to that 40 by 60 pole building. It's about 100 feet away from our garage where we sourced the power. So we'll talk about that today. I've got finally exciting day picking up all that extension cord that's been laying from the garage to the building for over 10 years take care of that today so i never have to see it laying across the ground again never have to hit it with the snow plow again never have to worry about hitting it with the zero turn again so yes there's a lot of exciting things happening here today at purple collar life and what you can't tell from looking outside in this beautiful sunny weather is that it's actually still really cold it's only 30 degrees outside so hopefully some of this dirt is frozen enough that it's not going to be the muddy mess that I was dealing with last week, but it's still pliable enough that I can easily fill in this trench. Looking out through the excavator here, I want to try to get that pathway sealed back in so that I can drive alongside the garage once again. Now it's going to take some packing down to get that done. And I want to be really careful with the new fill that I don't damage that conduit that we just put in there. But we'll at least be able to get some of that dirt filled in further to the trench to kind of smooth things over, I hope. Do a cold start here. Let the glow plugs go a couple seconds. While the Takeuchi is warming up, let's talk a little bit about the how we started out and what we already had. So to better understand what we spent, it makes sense to understand what we already had. We had this um, up to 100 amp panel already placed in the garage and we had space to add a 50 amp breaker to send power to the building. So in this box, we already had everything here. We just had to buy the breaker and then of course the wire to go to the building. Here in the pole building, I already had this 100 amp panel in place. I just didn't have any, any electricity feeding it. I also had already run some wiring for my outlets and switches. So the price we're gonna talk about today is basically just the wire from the garage to here, which was a six gauge wire. The ground, you can see here we did place a ground the water line, which we ran up through the same spot, and then the labor and the conduit in the ground. This smaller outdoor wire was used just for the purpose of trickle charging the camper. Noticed the other day this light wasn't working. And it should be. Obviously another part of the cost for digging this trench would be uh, the, the trench work. So to get power to the building required me to dig about a hundred foot trench across multiple terrains. Part of that was the driveway that we're facing right now and then you know, over here, the whole trench from the driveway to the building. So if I hadn't had the Mini X, that would have been an additional cost. So keep that in mind also, if you had to rent a machine or pay someone else to do it, that would add on to the cost considerably. I'm gonna grab some of this and I'll have to move with it. If I were doing this project again, I would do a better job of keeping track of where the gravel came from, keeping the dirt separate from the shale, separate from the gravel, separate from the sod. We talked in the comments of a previous video 
about how much more smooth the hydraulics are in this than in the John Deere. I would not even attempt to get this close to the garage with the John Deere and the front end bucket because I don't have as much smooth control over the hydraulics on that machine. But this professional grade, commercial grade Mini X has outstanding hydraulic control. tell with the uh, dirt here now if I've taken more than I should have there. Looks like I did get some sod so maybe that was not what I wanted to scoop up. So it looks like messing it up is a lot easier than fixing it up. I got some fill in here, but I'm gonna take the John Deere 2210 out to the end of the driveway where I've got some leftover number three gravel. I'll fill the rest of this in with that number three, and then I can get started on moving that dirt around in the mud. somewhat of a downhill transition between the level I'm on right now and the level the camera's on. So I do need to build some slope into this. And it is gonna sink in a little bit also, so. video about the difference in hydraulics. Now I was intentionally making that jerky to, to dump off the gravel, but another thing I noticed in addition to the difference between the Takeuchi and the John Deere hydraulics is the sound. So it's a much quieter cab on the Takeuchi than it is here on the John Deere. And that could be because on the Takeuchi, the engine's behind you with the exhaust going out further back behind you. So there's very little engine noise. It's really well insulated. Let's do a couple little pack-in tracks here. We need a little bit more gravel right up against the garage. So I want to put some right in by the garage first. I may have to do a little bit of finished work with a shovel actually to get that part right. right here, some there. Do some driving over it and packing in. It's definitely squishing down underneath us. That's one of the advantages of having a pile of gravel on hand at your home, rural living like this, you're always going to need a little bit of gravel for a driveway or a project. Yeah, the Mini X does a great job of pushing, you know, a, a bunch of dirt like this. It's pretty easy to skim along the ground and not mess up the soil if you pay attention to where, how hard you're pushing down. You can use the float in some cases. 
Um, in other cases, like right here, it's actually better not to use the float. And I'm just watching as I push to make sure that I'm not interrupting the grass. I'm keeping my bucket pretty close to the ground so that it can support me if I would tip forward as I get closer to the trench that we had dug here. Lift my front blade up a little bit and kind of let that fill in the trench. This is probably a pretty decent spot to sit and work. So in the movies they always say something like, let's get down to brass tacks. And I was never sure exactly what that means. It actually, I looked it up, it has something to do with, um, obviously means getting down to business, but it was had something to do with the British soldiers in a war. Uh, so you can Google that if you'd like a story about where the origin of let's get down to brass tacks came from. But I said in the beginning of the video we'd talk because some of you have asked what was the total cost. So like I stated earlier, the cost for me was a little bit different than what it might be for some of you. I already had the box in the garage with the capability to add to it. This is a lot muddier than I thought it would be filling this in. Um, I already had the 100 amp box in the pole building, which was a head start there. So that was money that I had already spent. Can't really add that into today's cost because I didn't have to spend anything extra on it today. So just the stuff that, you're, that you saw us do in this series of video, so that was the 100 foot of four inch conduit, 155 feet of six gauge wire, 100 feet of the red PEX water line to get water eventually to the pole building. You know, since we already had the trench, it just made sense to do that at the same time all the fittings and connections to, to connect to the conduit, the 50 amp breaker, sorry, for in the garage. So all that Home Depot stuff, the total was $1,686. So almost $1,700. Then there was the labor and thankfully, you know, Coach is a friend of ours he definitely gave us a good deal on labor. I had talked to some other people when it was going to be just for the connections and of hooking the power up, um, you know, installing those breakers and coach actually fed the lines all through the conduit, used the shop vac to create a vacuum and start the rope through and then use the rope to pull the electric line and the water line through. It was a great system. So for all of his labor, his charge was about $850. We didn't feel like that was enough. We actually paid him more than that. So figure in roughly $1,000 for labor. So when you've got um, $1,700 in stuff from Home Depot, and then about $1,000 of labor, and then like I said, the things that we didn't have to pay for this time, that ends up being about a $3,000 project, a little bit under a $3,000 project. Definitely more than a $3,000 project if we had had to buy the electric panel for in the big pole building, if I hadn't already had that installed. I'm actually glad I brought, bought that part of it when I did because back then stuff wasn't as expensive as it is now and that square D panel matches all the square D stuff that we have in our house so the same breakers that I use in the house will work in that so yes this is a messy task doing this part of it but I think we learned with trying with the John Deere that that was going to be worse. And I'm still going to have to wait for this to dry out to do the final grade because you just can't do final grade in a situation like this where it's just mud. 
I'm going to be really sideways here on a hill. So again, that's one of those discomfort things for me. I could probably twist this thing right around here so the bucket's coming closer to the camera, but my counterbalance, my counter ballast is then leaning downhill off grade behind me. And it's just an uncomfortable thing to be off kilter like that and trying to do some work. So I'm not gonna do that from this position as much as I could still make the reach and it might be just fine, not a risk I'm willing to take. It's probably the best I can do right in this spot right now. So lift the bucket up a little bit, but keep it down for support. I'm gonna lift the front blade up as I back out of here. Again, I'm feathering that front blade push this dirt down the hill without grading the sod. Keep pushing this dirt on top of the sod. I'm actually only going to put this right here because in a future video I have ordered a couple more sticks of that 8 inch pipe and I went to extend that, you know, while I've, got, while I've got the yard all messed up here, I figured I might as well extend that pipe into the woods a little further. So I'm gonna save that dirt gravel mix to put around it. But the, hopefully that answered your question. How much did this project cost us? Just under $3,000, which is honestly more than I was expecting to get power to the big building. Had we done this 10 years ago, I did the math on what wire pricing was back then. The materials would have been about half the cost, $850 going by prices I could find of the materials we needed if we had done that 10 years ago. So the total cost would have saved us about $1,000, a little bit less than $1,000. 10 years ago, so roughly would have been two thirds the price back then that it was today in 2024. Leave those comments down below if you agree with me that that thumb should retract further than what it does. I noticed when I'm doing some digging that, you know, it seems like if the thumb were a little bit further up against the stick or the boom, I could dig a little bit better because you can see like if I were digging down straight now, look how that thumb's already gonna make contact on the ground before I even dig. It's probably getting pretty dark for the GoPro. GoPros do not work the best in low light situations. So for you guys, I'll wrap up the discussion here. You can see my one light on the side of the Mini X does work just fine, but the one that's up on the boom is not working. So I have to check and see if that's a bulb issue or something in the side panel here that power's not getting up to it. We'll check that at a later date. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give us a big thumbs up. Leave those comments down below. We'll see you again the next time. Once again, we'll lift up the blade and back up.